How do you connect things together? How do you get from one place to another, mentally or within a logic structure? I found the brain and I said, this does exactly what I want to do. So when I get into a conversation that refers to any of that information that I've reviewed, all of a sudden I'm more well-versed, I have greater depth, and I have reawakened a lot of the thought process I had when I first learned that item. What I always have at my fingertips is the brain, where if I took that note, I could remember it. Because if the brain doesn't forget anything we've ever put in there, Hi everyone, it's Matt from The Brain, and I am having a nice hot coffee this morning with a fellow Brain user, Justin Kramer. Hi Matt. Hi, how are you? Justin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, Justin Kramer, uh, co-founder of ProShip, which is a small parcel shipment execution software here just outside of Milwaukee. Yes, we're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, having coffee, and we stumbled across uh just in some of your brain tutorial videos on youtube which we really really enjoyed we'll get to that in just a moment but first tell us how did you come up on the brain mm. so probably seven eight years ago i've been introduced to the seven bridges problem which is a really difficult mathematical problem but it's often used when you talk about rap databases how do you connect things together how do you get from one place to another mentally or within a logic structure. And as I went looking for a library that I could just use because I wanted to start to collect information and attach it in multiple forms, I found the brain. And I said, this does exactly what I want to do. Why would I go ahead and write another piece of software when I could just take something off the shelf and my brain has expanded tremendously ever since then. That's fantastic. Great, and then at one point you decided to make some videos. Well, what were the videos for? And um, yeah, how are the what's the the purpose of behind the videos that I've created? So, as any the brain user will know, they're gonna their colleagues are gonna look at them and they're gonna say, "How do you remember all that?" And I, I don't have the greatest memory, <laughs> but what I always have at my fingertips is the brain, where if I took that note, I can remember it where when I want to go ahead and wander the brain, which is a great feature, uh, if I want to go ahead and wander the brain, I actually reinforce thought types, data connections, all these other things. So when I get into a conversation that refers to any of that information that I've reviewed, all of a sudden I'm more well-versed, I have greater depth, and I have reawakened a lot of the thought process I had when I first learned that item. So as my coworkers saw this, like, how do you do that? And of course, I show him brain. And many of them said, well, I'd like to try that. So I had four or five different people wanting to look at it. And I decided, well, rather than mentor each of them one at a time, it's significantly easier to go ahead and put out a video, write an article. Uh, this way, whether they, they want to cause an attempt or whether they want to read and absorb in a different way, I've got both mediums available for them to review and um, really gain more knowledge. Hopefully some of it is going into their own portion of the brain. Yeah, and the brains in your videos and your YouTube channel, those are made with your real brain, with your data. So it's data that they're probably familiar with. Was that right? Exact sample brain about, you know, out of dogs or... Yeah, it can be that. So I, I, because one of, the, one of the things that I've done, especially in the last three years, is find a model to start my brain off of. Mm -hmm. um, Tiago Forte, who's known for the book, um, uh, The Second Brain. Um, that's probably not the book's name, but it's what I'm thinking of. Uh, Tiago Forte's PARA method, I added a little bit to it, kind of kind of uh, in homage to David Allen's Getting Things Done style, and right? basically have an inbox as well as pre-filed places for things to go. And then I've got my random and unsorted. It's basically an inbox. So being able to talk about that show that uh to these to the new brain users and then show them how in my day-to-day -day activity where i'm in half a dozen meetings or more and where i'm actually able to take notes on those meetings refer back to them keep a separate alumni section so that i know who worked where and in my industry sometimes people move being able to keep track of where they've been so that i can remember 
oh, you remember back in company A when we did this and we, we solved those problems? It's kind of like that. And it makes it a lot easier to communicate by analogy rather than by absolutes. Mm -hmm. Analogy is a great way to communicate uh, because it does often get people to think faster. Uh, whereas communicating by absolutes is necessary in the end, but not a great place to start. So it, being able to put all that information together allows us to start with that communication by analogy, get to a re really close to the target, and then zoom in with absolutes. And the brain has been a fabulous tool to allow me to do that. And it's something that I, that now when I am uh, working with the students that I'm working with, I'm able to show them really that focus part and how to do that because they already have a lot of the information in their copy of the brain organized in such a fashion that we're not talking about, well, where do you keep your information? Right. Instead, we're talking about how do I leverage this organizational structure in order to execute on my goal of completing a project, making a sale, um, or anything else within, within their sphere of influence. Wonderful. And I love your terminology of monolithic brain. We talk about this a lot at the Brain Technologies, one brain versus many monolithic brain. I love it. It's so descriptive. And I know that you have you know, one brain with all of your of your data to, yeah. to go to. And that's your, your preferred preference over smaller topic specific brains for projects. Uh, secret is I have two, right? Oh. I'd have, <laughs> I have my actual monolithic brain. And then I'd have basically a, an after image of it that I posted online. So anybody who's watching my videos can follow along with me. They can see how I've added things. And because it's the brain, it doesn't forget anything we've ever put in there. So if you're watching my very first video, you can see that tree structure in there. You can see where everything goes. And of course, this also means I don't have to expose any, any confidential information or anything like that. But both of them are based off the same structure. And as I learn in one, I put it in the other. And it, it just gives me ability to say, hey, look at, um, for example, four months ago, I had a conversation uh, with with my viewers about having a meeting with you. <laughs> Amazing how that foreshadowed there. But um, uh, and I showed them how to leverage uh, a, a template to add uh, all the leading sections, so it didn't have to think about it. I didn't have to. Oh well, I need a I need a to do section. I need a a, a goal section. I need a section to be able to record who was in the meeting. The template just puts it in there and let, allows me to go very, very quickly and get straight to the point of the conversation rather than looking like I'm continuously heads down trying to build a set of rice. Right, right, great. And with the users that you've shared these videos with, your your uh, students and your, your team members, have they picked up and started using the brain as well? Definitely. I, I will say that it's, uh, it's a, a skill that works well with reinforcement. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something like anything good, like picking up a uh, bass guitar or something like that. You may get great use out of it in the first week, first month. But as you continue, you'll find more and more nuance. When we first were talking, we were talking about the rich features within the, within the PC client itself. Mm. And that's really an understatement. The fact that all of these features have existed because it is not a solution that was created just a few years ago. It's been around for a long time. It's seen different thought processes. It's seen different uh, uh, different features added. It means that when you want to do something, there's probably a way. And one of the goals of my videos is if I found a way to do it, if I found a way to reproduce this that allows somebody to Im improve their note-taking quality, improve their their knowledge retention, and in create an easier way of doing a memory rehearsal, mm. right? Yeah. Memory rehearsal is where when you actually go back over something, you, you remember where you were, you remember all these other things which help to reinforce the, uh, neurologically, reinforce that in your own brain. Yeah. So though you always have the brain's where to go back for reference, that memory rehearsal through Wander, which I'm a, soon going to put out a Wander video because it's one of the most important features. And you know, with the big important features, sometimes you, you're you like, oh, it's not ready yet. It's not ready yet, right? <laughs> um, but that, that Wander feature is really a key, especially when you are attempting to 
really deeply understand something, how you actually use Wander, uh, how you pause, how when you uh, create new connections to existing thoughts, and when you decide to write down a to-do uh, in order to gather more information on something, and how frequently you wander. These are extremely important things that anybody who's been looking at Zettelkasten will recognize some of the features associated with it. Um, and though I'm not pure Zettelkasten, I'm not pure, pure GTD, uh, I think the blend of both within the uh, software allows me to get the best of both worlds and most importantly, be able to communicate accurate, deep and meaningful information when it falls into a conversation. That's wonderful. I love that you've mentioned just in that uh, that one little bit, note-taking, settlecasting, GTV, information management, yep. mind mapping, you know, the, the brain falls into all those categories, which obviously I'm <laughs> but I haven't seen anything else that can capture all those different formats in, in one application. And the fact that you're highlighting uh, Wander Mode, mm -hmm. which uh, I think I think some people do see Wander Mode as fun, cute, like interesting, mm -hmm. but it can also be incredibly meaningful to create a brain mm -hmm. and go into Wander Mode and sit back and and study and absorb how your information is is related and you gather and gain so much more additional insight by seeing what you put into your brain that you may have not even realized until it's that repetition comes through and you see it over and over again so. i've been working on understanding knowledge of how people learn for a couple of years now as you grow a business and you want to continue to be able to move forward. So you have to teach somebody to be doing the job. You believe it, right? Um, so I went all the way back and I and learned from books like Spark, learned from Sal Khan, founder of uh, Khan Academy. Oh, yes. My kids use Khan Academy. Abs. I use Khan Academy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like learning statistics late to life. But, uh, uh, you know, all of them talk about uh, different ways to activate and retain knowledge, retain memories in the brain. Um, they talk about mastery. They talk about all these other things. And when you put all of that together, I think wander is the single most important feature that exists in the brain oh, because it actually allows you to reinforce things you've already learned. Are you right? How many of us have, have sat there with a, with an equation and we're like, we're like, I used to know how to actually simplify this. <laughs> All right. Uh, and well, if you've had written some of that stuff down, if sometimes if you have that same book and it, you know, that it, you can open up and it all comes back. Yeah. Right? Remembering the formula. Exactly. It all comes back to you because you've reignited the right set of neurons and then the cascade brings it all back. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to me, wander, all that does is it continues to reignite those neurons. And, then, and cascade information continues to flow through. And sometimes you actually have to ask yourself, okay, that thing I just thought of, do I, do I pause my wander and do I land that information into my brain? Because if I do, then every time I go through this section, every time it wanders past that, I will have a greater chance of actually reigniting that information, re-tickling that portion of my brain. And that thing that would just be on the grass that last time I was trying to talk about it, will now be that much more revealed to your brain. So, yeah, that's why I think Wander is the single most important feature of the brain, second only to its ability to capture the Yeah, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We've made um, some new friends here today. Yep. Maybe this is the first episode, and I tweeted out this morning that we were um, commuters talking computers. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> something that will be nice. a new episode, man. Yeah, I think yep. I can pitch that in Hollywood next time. Uh, Except I'm back in LA. I will be putting out new videos soon. I look forward to anybody subscribing, liking. I'm also over on Medium, uh, where, in the, where usually the conversation is a lot more directed, uh, uh, unlike YouTube comments, which aren't always the most positive. Uh, so I would love to. Uh, I'd love to get comments. I'd love to see what features, since I do like to focus directly on individual features for. Uh, for my viewers, my readers, 
this has been really, really great getting to uh, to speak with you and sharing you know more thoughts on the brain as an avid brain user. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you.